What do you remember most about Patrick Swayze? In addition to his iconic achievements in television, Patrick is marked by a series of injuries and decades-long battles with addiction and mental health issues, completely opposite of what we think of the life of a superstar. Patrick's life is filled with hardships that leave fans heartbroken. It can be said that his life from the beginning to the end was covered by misfortune. This video endeavors to provide an insight into the myriad tragedies that befell Patrick Swayze throughout his lifetime. From an early age, Swayze found himself immersed in the world of dance, a passion ignited by his mother's influential presence. With a mother who staunchly refused the idea of babysitters, Swayze often accompanied her to work, where he absorbed the rhythm and discipline of dance rehearsals. At the tender age of three, he took his first ballet steps, setting him on a path that defied societal norms, especially in the conservative landscape of the southern United States during that era. However, Swayze's journey into the world of dance was not without its challenges. In a society where masculinity was often narrowly defined, his passion for ballet made him a target for ridicule and scorn among his peers. Despite also participating in traditionally masculine pursuits, such as football and swimming, Swayze found himself subjected to taunts and even violence from his classmates. The memories of being teased and bullied by his peers lingered, with one particularly harrowing incident etched in his memory. Swayze recounted in his memoir the brutal encounter where he was ambushed by a group of five boys, an experience that left him battered and bruised. It was during this tumultuous time that his father intervened, imparting upon him a lesson that would shape his approach to adversity, the art of standing up for oneself. Guided by his father's teachings, Swayze confronted each assailant individually, demonstrating both physical resilience and a determination to reclaim his sense of dignity. The experience, though fraught with pain and fear, instilled in him a newfound sense of empowerment and self-assurance. His actions not only earned him a measure of respect among his peers, but also served as a testament to his unwavering resolve in the face of adversity. Patsy Swayze, Patrick's mother, was not merely a supportive figure in his pursuit of dance. She was a driving force, an uncompromising presence, whose demands for perfection bordered on the extreme. Her role as a choreographer only heightened the intensity of her scrutiny as she wielded her expertise with an unyielding precision that left little room for error. For Patrick, this meant navigating a delicate balance between his passion for dance and the relentless pressure to excel, a tightrope walk that would shape his identity and define his relationship with his mother for years to come. Despite her undeniable influence on his career and artistic development, Patsy's approach to motherhood was far from conventional. Described as strict and often unkind, she pushed her son to the brink, instilling in him a sense of discipline that bordered on the brink of abuse. Her criticism cut deep, leaving wounds that lingered long after the dance rehearsals had ended. Yet, despite the hardships, Patrick remained steadfastly loyal to his mother, forging a bond that transcended the challenges they faced. Behind closed doors, however, a darker reality lurked. Patsy's behavior towards her son was not limited to emotional and psychological manipulation. It extended into the realm of physical abuse, casting a shadow of fear and uncertainty over Patrick's formative years. The scars of this trauma ran deep, etching themselves into the fabric of his being, shaping his worldview and influencing his relationships. It wasn't until Patrick reached the milestone of his 18th birthday that the cycle of abuse was interrupted. His father, recognizing the toll Patsy's actions were taking on their son, intervened with a stern ultimatum, threatening to leave if the violence did not cease. It was a pivotal moment, a testament to the power of love and the willingness to confront the demons that lurked within the family dynamic. In the years that followed, Patrick and his mother maintained a fragile peace their relationship tempered by the scars of the past. Though they remained close, the specter of abuse loomed large, 
an unspoken truth that hovered on the periphery of their interactions. For Patrick's wife, Lisa Niemi, Patsy's troubled upbringing offered a glimpse into the origins of her behavior, a cycle of generational abuse that echoed through the corridors of time. You might not know this, but long before he graced the silver screen with his charismatic presence, or even before he donned his ballet slippers, Swayze harbored dreams of becoming a gridiron hero, a football player destined for glory on the field. In his youth, Swayze's ambitions were firmly rooted in the realm of athletics, with football standing as his primary passion. Whether he harbored dreams of going pro or simply sought to excel at the collegiate level remains unclear. But one thing was certain. He was determined to make his mark on the football field. With aspirations of securing a scholarship to pave his way through university, Swayze dedicated himself wholeheartedly to honing his skills and mastering the game. Had fate unfolded differently, Swayze might have found himself alongside a cohort of other celebrities who once donned the pads and helmets of collegiate football. The likes of Dwayne Johnson, Channing Tatum, Josh Duhamel, and Mark Harmon all trod similar paths, their gridiron exploits serving as a springboard to broader horizons. However, for Swayze, destiny had other plans, plans that were shaped by the capricious hand of fate. In a cruel twist of fate, Swayze's football dreams were shattered in the blink of an eye during his senior year of high school. In what should have been a routine game, a devastating knee injury brought his gridiron aspirations crashing down around him. It was a crushing blow, a moment that irrevocably altered the trajectory of his life and career. Yet, true to his resilient spirit, Swayze refused to be defined by adversity. Faced with the daunting prospect of an uncertain future, he channeled his boundless energy and determination into his other passions, namely dance and gymnastics. Through painstaking effort and unwavering perseverance, he embarked on a journey of rehabilitation and self-discovery, rebuilding both his strength and mobility with every determined step. However, fate wasn't finished testing Swayze's resolve. Just as he seemed poised to reinvent himself as a professional ballet dancer, tragedy struck once again in the form of a debilitating left leg injury. While dancing had been his primary passion, it was the cruel twist of fate in the form of a devastating leg injury during his high school years that served as the catalyst for his foray into the world of acting. Indeed, the parallels between dance and acting are evident both being forms of performance that require an innate sense of timing, expression, and physicality. However, the transition from pirouettes to dialogue demanded a wholly different set of skills, one that Swayze had yet to cultivate until necessity forced his hand. The trajectory of Swayze's life took an unexpected turn in 1973 when a seemingly innocuous tooth abscess spiraled into a life-threatening staph infection, ravaging his body and settling in his injured leg. The prospect of amputation loomed ominously, threatening to rob him not only of his mobility, but also of his dreams of a career in ballet. It was a harrowing ordeal, a brush with mortality that left Swayze grappling with the harsh realities of his chosen path. Yet, even in the depths of despair, Swayze refused to succumb to defeat. Though his aspirations of becoming a professional ballet dancer lay in ruins, he refused to let adversity extinguish his spirit. Instead, he found solace in the prospect of a new beginning, a chance to explore new avenues and redefine his identity. With an empty void gnawing at his soul and a yearning for purpose burning within him, Swayze made the bold decision to embark on a new chapter in his life. Packing his dreams and aspirations into a suitcase, he bid farewell to his familiar surroundings and set his sights on the glittering lights of Los Angeles, a city teeming with endless possibilities and boundless opportunities. In the City of Angels, Swayze threw himself headlong into the world of acting, immersing himself in the vibrant theater scene that thrived within its bustling streets. From humble beginnings in a traveling Disney show to stepping into the iconic role of Danny Zuko in Greece as a replacement, 
Swayze honed his craft with each performance, carving out a niche for himself in the competitive world of entertainment. It was in the crucible of the theater that Swayze's talents truly blossomed, paving the way for his cinematic debut in the 1979 film Skate Town USA. Though his journey had been fraught with setbacks and obstacles, it was through adversity that Swayze discovered his true calling, a calling that would propel him to dizzying heights of fame and acclaim in the years that followed. Dirty Dancing stands as a timeless masterpiece in the annals of cinema, a cultural phenomenon that continues to captivate audiences decades after its release. At the heart of this iconic film lies the magnetic presence of Patrick Swayze, whose portrayal of the enigmatic dance instructor Johnny Castle remains etched in the collective memory of moviegoers worldwide. Released in 1987, Dirty Dancing catapulted Swayze to superstardom, earning him his first of three Golden Globe nominations and solidifying his status as a leading man of unparalleled charisma and talent. As Johnny Castle, Swayze embodied a rare combination of rugged charm and raw vulnerability, captivating audiences with his electrifying dance moves and undeniable screen presence. Central to the film's enduring legacy are its unforgettable moments and quotable lines, each imbued with a sense of timeless allure and nostalgia. From Jennifer Grey's iconic declaration of, I carried a watermelon, to Swayze's immortal utterance of nobody puts baby in the corner, dirty dancing remains a treasure trove of cinematic gems that continue to resonate with viewers of all ages. Perhaps the most iconic image from the film is the mesmerizing lift scene, where Swayze effortlessly hoists Gray into the air during their meticulously rehearsed dance routine. However, behind the scenes, the reality was far from glamorous. As Swayze later revealed, filming the lift scene posed a formidable challenge, exacerbated by the harsh conditions of the shoot and the lingering pain from a previous injury. During the shoot, Swayze grappled with excruciating discomfort, stemming from a knee injury sustained earlier in production. With most of the cartilage in his knee worn away, every movement sent searing pain coursing through his body, making even the simplest tasks a Herculean feat. Yet, despite the agony, Swayze soldiered on, determined to deliver a performance worthy of the film's lofty ambitions. Adding to the difficulty was the frigid temperature of the water, which only intensified Swayze's suffering and tested his resilience to the limit. As he struggled to lift Gray out of the water, every muscle strained against the weight, and every breath was a battle against the biting cold. In the end, Swayze's perseverance paid off, resulting in a cinematic moment that transcends the confines of the screen. His grace and strength, coupled with Gray's ethereal beauty, combined to create a tableau of unparalleled beauty and passion, a moment frozen in time, immortalized for generations to come. Do you know that the making of Roadhouse was not just another routine production for Patrick Swayze, it was a grueling trial by fire that pushed the boundaries of physical endurance and tested the limits of his resilience. Released in 1989, this action-packed thriller thrust sways into the role of James Dalton, a tough-as-nails bouncer tasked with taming the chaos of a rowdy Missouri bar undergoing refurbishment. From the outset, it was clear that Roadhouse would be no ordinary film for sways. His character, James Dalton, epitomized physical prowess and unwavering determination, traits that would be put to the test in the film's climactic fight scene, a no-holds-barred showdown between Dalton and a gang member played by Marshall Teague. Unlike many Hollywood productions that rely on stunt doubles and choreographed fight sequences, Swayze was determined to bring authenticity to his performance. Refusing to rely on artifice, he insisted on engaging in real combat with Teague, throwing himself into the fray with reckless abandon. The result was a grueling battle that unfolded over more than 70 takes, spanning five intense nights of filming. With a stunt coordinator and fight trainer standing by, Swayze and Teague spared no effort in delivering a performance that would leave audiences breathless. However, the toll of the relentless combat soon began to take its toll. As fists flew and bodies collided, 
injuries piled up on both sides. Swayze's ferocious blows broke Teague's eye socket, while Teague's retaliatory strike with a seemingly harmless log landed with bone-crushing force, fracturing Swayze's ribs and leaving him gasping for air. Despite the agony coursing through his body, Swayze pressed on, summoning every ounce of strength and resilience to deliver a performance that would leave an indelible mark on audiences. Yet, behind the scenes, the exhaustion and pain were all too real, as Swayze struggled to catch his breath and summon the energy to continue the fight. In his memoir, Swayze recounted the harrowing ordeal, describing how he barely managed to drag himself out of the river after the final take his body battered and bruised, his spirit tested but unbroken. And yet, even as the cameras stopped rolling, the toll of the fight lingered, a stark reminder of the sacrifices made in pursuit of cinematic excellence. The story of Patrick Sways and Lisa Nimi's journey towards parenthood is one marked by love, loss, and profound resilience. From the early days of their courtship to the heartbreaking trials they endured in their quest to start a family, Theirs is a tale of unwavering commitment and unwavering hope. Their love story began in a dance class, where a young Swayze, aged 18, first laid eyes on Niemi, then just 14 years old. Despite the age gap, a connection sparked between them, and they embarked on a romance that would withstand the test of time. Two years later, they took their relationship to the next level, and in 1975, they exchanged vows and pledged their lives to each other in marriage. For Sways, the prospect of fatherhood held a special significance, a dream he had long nurtured and eagerly anticipated. In his heart, he longed to experience the joys of parenthood and to share the profound bond of love and guidance that he had cherished with his own father. Their hopes were realized in 1990 when they received the joyous news of Niemi's pregnancy a moment filled with boundless excitement and anticipation. Yet, their happiness was short-lived, shattered by the devastating loss of their unborn child in a miscarriage that left them reeling with grief and heartache. The pain of their loss was palpable, as they grappled with the profound sense of emptiness and despair that engulfed them in the wake of their tragedy. In a poignant moment of shared sorrow, they found themselves weeping in the parking lot, their dreams of parenthood shattered by the cruel hand of fate. Despite their profound grief, Swayze and Nimi refused to succumb to despair, finding solace in each other's arms and drawing strength from their enduring love. Together, they embarked on a journey of healing and resilience, determined to overcome the obstacles that stood in the way of their dreams. In the years that followed, they endeavored to conceive once again, but their efforts were met with heartbreak and disappointment. Despite their unwavering determination, the elusive promise of parenthood remained just out of reach, leaving them to confront the painful reality of their circumstances. As they grappled with the harsh reality of their situation, the topic of adoption emerged as a potential alternative. Yet, for Swayze, the desire for biological children remained steadfast, rooted in a deeply held conviction that echoed his own experiences of fatherhood. For Swayze, the weight of fame proved to be a double-edged sword, bringing both adulation and inner turmoil. Following the explosive success of Dirty Dancing, he found himself thrust into the unforgiving glare of the spotlight, grappling with the pressures and expectations that accompanied his newfound celebrity status. The relentless scrutiny of the public eye left him feeling vulnerable and exposed, struggling to reconcile the image others projected onto him with his own sense of self. As he navigated the treacherous waters of fame, Swayze sought solace in the embrace of alcohol, a misguided attempt to numb the overwhelming emotions that threatened to consume him. In his own words, he admitted to trying to deal with fame by turning to alcohol, a coping mechanism that ultimately proved to be more destructive than comforting. However, the roots of Swayze's addiction ran deeper than the pressures of celebrity alone. The untimely death of his father, Jesse, in 1982, served as a devastating blow, one that would reverberate through his life with profound consequences. 
stricken with grief and grappling with the sudden loss of his patriarch, Swayze sought refuge in the numbing embrace of alcohol, drowning his sorrows in a futile attempt to dull the pain. For the next decade, Swayze battled his demons in the shadows, his reliance on alcohol growing ever more insidious as he struggled to cope with the weight of his grief and the demands of his burgeoning career. It wasn't until the filming of Fatherhood that he hit rock bottom, a moment of reckoning that forced him to confront the destructive power of his addiction head on. With courage and determination, Swayze made the courageous decision to seek help checking himself into rehab in a bid to reclaim his life and confront his demons. In 1993, he emerged from the shadows victorious, having successfully conquered his addiction and embarked on the path to sobriety. Patrick Swayze's propensity for onset injuries became a recurring theme in his storied career, leaving many to speculate on the factors that contributed to his unfortunate streak of mishaps. While the exact reasons remain unclear, it is likely a combination of factors, including a penchant for performing his own stunts and a string of unfortunate circumstances that conspired against him. One such incident occurred during the filming of Letters from a Killer, a 1998 thriller that would leave an indelible mark on Swayze's life and career. It was a forgettable film in many respects, but for Swayze, it would be remembered as the site of a harrowing ordeal that nearly cost him his mobility. During a fateful scene involving a horse, Swayze was thrown from the saddle with devastating force, the impact leaving him writhing in agony on the ground below. In an instant, both of his legs were shattered, rendering him unable to walk and casting a shadow of uncertainty over his future. The severity of Swayze's injuries was compounded by additional trauma to his shoulder, where at least one tendon was detached, with some reports suggesting as many as four severed tendons. The extent of his injuries was so severe that he had to be airlifted from the set to receive urgent medical attention. In the aftermath of the accident, Swayze faced a grueling road to recovery, one that would test his resilience and determination like never before. Over the course of twelve surgeries, Doctors worked tirelessly to repair the damage, employing steel and titanium rods in a bid to reconstruct his shattered limbs. However, the toll of the accident extended beyond the physical realm, casting a shadow over Swayze's personal life and impacting his struggle with sobriety. As his body healed, his mind grappled with the trauma of the incident, triggering a series of emotional struggles and setbacks. In 1993, Swayze took a courageous step towards healing, checking himself into rehab in a bid to conquer his addiction once and for all. Yet, despite his best intentions, the road to recovery proved to be far from straightforward. Like many who grapple with addiction, Swayze found himself grappling with the insidious grip of alcohol, his sobriety a fragile thread in the face of life's myriad challenges. In the years that followed, Swayze's battle with alcoholism ebbed and flowed, his sobriety a precarious balance that hung in the balance with each passing day. Despite his best efforts, he found himself succumbing to the siren call of alcohol, his resolve weakened by the weight of his inner demons and the pressures of external circumstances. For Swayze's wife, Lisa Niemi, the toll of his addiction was keenly felt, a constant source of anguish and heartache that threatened to tear their marriage apart. In 2003, unable to bear witness to her husband's downward spiral any longer, Nimi made the agonizing decision to leave, seeking refuge in an apartment just minutes away from their shared home. For Nimi, Swayze's drinking transformed him into a stranger, a shadow of the man she had once loved, his gentle demeanor eclipsed by the dark clouds of addiction. Though her love for him remained unwavering, she could no longer stand by and watch as he descended further into self-destruction. Yet, even in the depths of despair, the bond between Swayze and Niemi remained unbreakable, their love enduring despite the trials they faced. Though physically separated, they remained in daily contact, 
their shared commitment to each other serving as a beacon of hope in the darkness. In 2004, their love triumphed over adversity as Swayze and Niemi reunited, their bond stronger than ever in the wake of their shared struggles. In the years that followed, Swayze remained steadfast in his commitment to sobriety, his determination to conquer his demons fueled by the unwavering support of his devoted wife. The untimely passing of Patrick Swayze in 2009 marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy that spanned decades and touched the hearts of millions around the world. At just 57 years old, his death cast a shadow over the entertainment industry, robbing it of one of its most beloved and enduring talents. Swayze's journey towards his final days was marked by a courageous battle against a formidable adversary, stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Diagnosed at the outset of 2008, the news sent shockwaves through the entertainment world as fans and admirers grappled with the stark reality of his mortality. In March of that year, Swayze made his diagnosis public, shedding light on the gravity of his condition and the challenges that lay ahead. Yet even in the face of insurmountable odds, he approached his illness with characteristic grace and resilience, determined to fight with every ounce of strength he possessed. For Swayze, the early signs of his illness were subtle, a nagging sense of indigestion, a sudden and inexplicable weight loss. Yet, as the symptoms intensified, he knew that something was gravely amiss. The telltale signs of jaundice served as a chilling harbinger of the battle that lay ahead, a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the urgency of his fight. Undeterred by the daunting prognosis, Sways threw himself into a grueling regimen of experimental treatments and chemotherapy, all while continuing to honor his professional commitments. Despite the relentless onslaught of his illness, he remained steadfast in his determination to defy the odds and cling to hope. Yet, as the months wore on, the toll of his illness became increasingly apparent. The cancer metastasized to his liver, spreading its tendrils throughout his body and diminishing his strength with each passing day. In September 2009, surrounded by loved ones at his ranch, Patrick Swayze's valiant battle came to an end, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. What do you think about the tragedies that Patrick Swayze had to go through? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.